I think throughout history, ever since we've been using vaccines, there have always been questions. Um, but there's also, I think, uh, in place a very good safety process to evaluate vaccines to make sure that they are safe before they're offered to the public. And certainly this case is no exception. Um, the process has been very visible. And even in some cases where there have been concerns, you can see what's been done to, to make sure that those are investigated. First, I'd say the risk is very low. Um, when the CDC and the ACIP did an analysis of over 8 million doses that were administered, they found only 15 cases. Uh, and that's good because uh, that's really fewer than two in a million. Uh, but also, it's important to recognize the risk of clots and um, other conditions that one gets from COVID infection. And the risk of actually getting those is much higher uh, if you get COVID as an infection than what you might experience even as a side effect from a vaccine. COVID infection causes uh, clots in patients. Uh, it can occur in many parts of the body. Um, in this case, these were very specific types of uh, clots that occurred also with low platelet counts, which made it slightly unusual, which is one of the reasons why they called a pause so that they look at the data in a little bit more detail. I think it's done a couple of things. Number one, um, it's uh, reassured individuals, at least uh, about the safety process. You know, we're not willing to cut corners relative to vaccines and therefore even cases that occur very rarely are worth investigating and therefore uh, indicated the reason for the pause. Uh, I think some people would have questions, rightly so, about what do the data show. And fortunately, after they did the 10-day investigation, they did found the incidence was very small, um, but they did uh, feel it was important to uh, associate a warning for those people just to be aware in the fact sheets. We uh, have a very small amount of Johnson & Johnson vaccine currently. Uh, most of what we've received and continue to receive is Pfizer, uh, but uh, the Johnson & Johnson is a single dose series, which makes it uh, easier to use in hard to reach populations. Uh, it negates the need to have to go back and give a second dose, so that group will probably be one of the areas of focus for this vaccine. I think you have to go to people whom they trust. That could be other family members, it could be uh, community leaders, it could be faith-based leaders. You have to give people information that um, convinces them that the risks of the disease are higher than the risks uh, that might be perceived from a vaccine. And I think in our case, uh, we've seen most of the data show that it's really very useful to prevent uh, symptomatic infection. I think it's a combination of factors. Some people uh, really uh, need a lot of information, I think, to have uh, the ability to be convinced. And so it can be very individual as a, as a decision. Transmission is based on many factors. Um, certainly positivity rate is one of the indicators that we look at. And generally speaking, if you see the positivity incidence in the community going up, you expect to see higher cases and the converse as well. But it's not a one-to-one -one relationship. Um, and certainly those individuals who are sick and present to hospitals um, present a different situation than those in the general community. So it, it is one indicator, but it's not the only indicator. transmission of infection is based on a lot of factors. It's the infectivity of the organism, it is the contagiousness of the individual who's infected, it's the susceptibility of someone who doesn't have a disease, um, it's the contact patterns uh, amongst uh, individuals in the population, and there are environmental factors that also go into that. So it's, it's complex. What we can take is the pandemic's not over. Yeah, and clearly we need to be vigilant and focus on things that we know work, which is continuing to, to provide immunizations to as many people as possible, continue to use the precautions that we know that work, and not to let our guard down. Uh, the pandemic is far from over, uh, not only in this country, but worldwide, and we need to be aware of that. I think with pandemics, we're always um, fighting our last war, and so you base your planning uh, on your experience from the previous one. 
And this is no different. A lot of the protocols that were developed and the processes in place were based on our experience for influenza H1N1. Prior to that, the previous pandemics of influenza as well. And so COVID is slightly different in some ways. There are a lot of similarities. And there was a, the SARS epidemic uh, as well that preceded that was essentially a very similar organism, gave us a lot of information about how to address this, this pandemic. You sort of have to pull all those uh, factors into place to, to sort of figure out how to manage the current one. I think for this scenario, there was a lot of concern of gathering a lot of people together, children, teachers, administrators in the schools. Um, and many schools responded by implementing the protocols that we know have, have worked, which is screening individuals for symptoms before they came in, making sure there was physical distance, ensuring people had masks, uh, limiting activities that would have uh, large groups of people in indoor settings. And what we found was uh, that the data showed that generally worked very well as long as it was maintained. And so in the right setting, using the right precautions, you can actually do that very safely. Testing remains a very important part of the strategy. We still um, need testing to identify disease, both symptomatic and asymptomatic disease. Um, there are new tests coming on the market. Um, information about those tends to vary, and so it's not uh, always clear what tests are the best tests to use, um, but we envision a future where it will probably be more common as requirements perhaps for travel, perhaps even for businesses, for other scenarios. So it will remain a, a big part of our strategy with respect to this disease.